All right, uh, we're of course uh, still on the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Coming up next, uh, we're going to be moving into the papers uh, and uh, seeing what major stories are making headlines across Nigeria today. Uh, we'll be joined by a senior news editor, Kayode Ladende, mm -hmm. um, who of course uh, will be speaking with us on some of these major stories. Um, I think we're going to quickly just go straight to the punch newspapers and see what we can quickly find over there. It's going to be on the screen in a few seconds. Uh, you can uh, join us and go through these stories. Yes, it says there, Ebony Heads men killings rise to 52. Niger bandits kill 16. Also, four policemen, seven others gunned down in fresh southeast region attacks. Uh, we closed shops when house of youth were brandishing cutlasses, and that's from an Igbo trader. Gulag's murder, governors worried, ACF warns northerners, Wiki attacks Uzodimma. We can also see on the punch this morning, customs demand private aircraft papers, targets higher revenue. Process to prosecute 400 arrested Boko Haram sponsors, ongoing, and that's from the Attorney General of the Federation. Also, Jusun plots to stop judgment delivery in Supreme and appeal courts. Oil export revenue dropped by 98% in April, says the NNPC. And uh, still on the punch this morning, SAN and others berate Buhari regime for attack on Shawari. Songwon Lu asks federal government to fund Lagos Badagri Highway reconstruction. And a businessman kicks as guard arrested for murder dies in police custody. Gunmen rob 25 or your estate households, steal money with POS machine. Um, I think I'll just quickly throw in five killed in Ebony State as Southeast uh, sit at home records full compliance. Those are the um, stories that we can find on the punch this morning. Also, on the Nation newspaper, two week ultimatum for bankers to declare assets, defaulters to forfeit assets, EFCC, no scared cows, Abiodun's age to be arraigned in the US on June 8th, IAPOP sit at home order taunts bloody. Five dead in Enugu, Eboni. Jam extends UTME registration by two weeks. Robbers invade all your towns with POS machines. Middle Belt, North, disagree on secession calls. Southeast insecurity, ACF issues travel advisory. Two inspectors killed. Police stations raised in Abia, Imo. Explosion in River State. Oshomole, Izeyamu, ask Obasaki to be magnanimous in victory. Those are the stories on the Nation newspaper. And now on the Nigerian Tribune, uh, we see here, empty streets in southeastern states. And also banks, markets, schools, parks, petrol stations, and others shut down. Gulak, northern governors warn against politicization of killing. Uzodima says arrests made in respect of his murder. Jonathan, reps, minority caucus, Imo APC condemn killing. Nigeria needs brand new constitution, says Afenifer. And also federal government deactivates international passports of COVID-19 advisory violators. Scientists successfully test cancer-killing drug that may replace uh, chemotherapy. Also, Buhari appoints King Ibe, special um, envoy to Chad and Lake Chad Basin region. Oni set to host world or first world Yoruba Carnival of Arts and Culture. Uh, we can also see here, um, 2021 UTME Jam gives fresh option to candidates with failed registration. Showare treated in hospital as police tear gas injures him. And also bandits invade Niger community, kill 13, raise police station. Uh, last one, federal government to open bid on highway development initiative today. And moving on now to Daily Trust newspaper. Experts warn of anarchy as IPOB locks down Southeast. Odinkalu says it's vote of no confidence on leaders. And Don says IPOB working in sync with region's governors. Nigerians battle for drugs as India shuts pharmaceutical coys. Four killed in Eboi, police station raised in Imo. NNPC to acquire equity in six private refineries. Achiku expands business with SAC Koi Bank in Adamoa. Customs to verify private jet owners from June 7. And there's an exclusive story here on the Daily Trust. Abductors of Jangebe schoolgirls behind Tegina students kidnap in Niger State. 
Firefighters, families migrate to Niger to on over 300 motorcycles. Governor jets out as abductees remain in custody. Uh, those are the stories there on the Daily Trust. And then we see pictures of empty streets. And the caption reads, IPOP sit at home order records mass compliance in Anambra State. All right. Let's quickly bring in um, our guest this morning, Coyote Ladende. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Osage. All right. I'll start with the um, sit at home order. There's been, you know, different reactions to it. Um, um, you know, but of course, the news, newspapers have rec um, reported this morning that it was completely successful. Um, how do you see, you know, the events of the last few days, and uh, of course, the different theories that have uh, risen from it? I, I think there's a cause for us to be worried. There's a cause for us to look at these issues critically. It's to let us know that uh, we cannot wish away our history. We cannot wish away our past. It's something that has, in the recent time, has brought up some old wounds. But, you know, as much as over time, while we were in school, I think we left school anyway, <laughs> while we were in school, we were told and won several times to avoid playing up some of those vestiges of the Biafra War. But time has proven that we cannot wish it away, no matter what it is. There are some people who witness that war that are still alive, so they would narrate the story to us. So one thing is clear here, that some people were taking advantage of the fact that we refuse to do what we need to do. That is talking about what happened and letting to heal the wounds. However, this is a case of some kind of cohesion, I mean, cohesion from the, the people who issued this order. We saw what happened some days ago where they had to go on the streets, shooting guns in the air, telling people who don't dare come out. That is no longer a democracy. This is something we have to be careful about. So having said that, should we call it successful? Should we call it a forceful, successful order? I think it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. But having, what, what I'm trying to say is that the events in the past days led to the successful uh, compliance of this order. The way some of these youths are being treated, the way some of these issues are being handled in the Southeast is quite worrisome. And this is one of the reasons why state policing is arrived. This is one of the reasons why we need state policing at this point in time. Because the way the security agents are handling some of the irate youths in one area is different from the other. Whether they are peaceful, whether they are violent, the police seems to be very, very uh, uh, civil in some areas and violent in some areas. So these are issues that we need to look at. So, by and large, the implication of this is to let us know that largely the South is feel marginalized. The South is feel that they need to own their destiny into their hands. Do we support what they are doing? Do they have a clear goal in mind? I'm not too sure about that. But the government needs to listen to them. The government needs to look at their issues and let us attend to some of the issues raised. And this is very critical. Okay. So another big issue in, in the past few hours has been the um, alleged shooting at Shore. Um, we saw that he tried to, you know, protest with all the youth at the Unity Fountain in Abuja yesterday. But um, a video on a Facebook Live showed him being shot at with a tear gas canister. And he showed us pictures of, of, of a cot, basically, uh, with some, you know, light bleeding on his body. You know, but uh, a police report, you know, argued otherwise, saying um, it was peaceful, Shiro was not shot at, and that it was all lies and fallacy. And we know that on the Punch newspaper here, senior advocates of Nigeria, also other groups, um, other um, notable people in the country, Professor Patu Tomi, amongst others, have been criticizing the regime of President Muhammad Buhari for the attack on Shore. Um, how do you comment, Mr. Ladende? It's important we give some background to 
whatever led to that. When you have the likes of Professor Party told me, you have the members of uh, uh, NCF, that's the... Uh, National Consultative Front. The, yes, they, 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 they are all friends, and it shouldn't be right for them to go on air and on the air and say that uh, um, Shuwere was dramatizing. And if police say that it was all lies to, I think we should be, we should have the benefit of doubt. But where we'll find the truth is what is worrisome. However, shoot at, it's something that we need to look at. Was it a canister or was it a gunshot? That is something that I think we have agreed that it wasn't a bullet shot. It was a canister shot. Who shot the canister is another debate. Was it by the guy in front of Shore or the police? Now, the police have said that they didn't shoot any of this. Whether it was the guy, that also it's a debate out there. So I want to play safe, just like everybody is doing. I'm not going to say police shot at him. And I'm not also going to say that Showeret uh, was, was in a dramatic uh, frenzy. But one thing is clear, that um, the police need to be more civil, and Showeret needs to be... Um, it needs to be clearer to us, because that does not look like a bullet wound, in my own view. Whether it's now a canister sh uh, uh, shot, let us also know who did this. If it found out that she were dramatizes, I think it's something that should be taken up legally so that we don't encourage such kind of drama. And if police have done this, this is one of the issues that we should not allow to just be swept under the carpet. So, All right. so that our sensibility is not taken for granted. So it's very important that somebody must be punished either way. Okay, well... Um Let's move on. There's yeah. a story on the punch this morning that says, um, process to prosecute 400 arrested Boko Haram uh, sponsors ongoing, and that's from the AGF. Uh, we've heard this before, a few months ago. Uh, we're times. back at it again. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, also speak on that. Yeah, I guess it's, this is to let you know that this is a response to some of this outcry that we are making. We hear of being arrested, we hear of being prosecuted, and we don't hear that they are being sentenced and or some level of judgments are being carried out. We don't hear names so either. It, do we even bother about the names now? But if you want their names, what I'm looking at, if you have such number, names might not be of interest to many people, but we're more interested in their sponsors. We're more interested in notable names that we know. Yeah, that, that's, what, I, that's what I'm talking about. If you, if you, if the, if the government says that they have 400 sponsors of Boko Haram, okay, sponsors, them, yes. not just Boko Haram. No, You're right. They're sponsors. So, yes. Yeah. So let's let us have. I understand that such cases are not supposed to be open. I understand that we need to protect the judges that are trying these cases. But if they need to make examples of the sponsors for us to believe that they are truly making headlines. It is important. So I think it's our job now as journalists to stay on this matter, to let us know the, the venues where these cases are taking place and let us have these names. 400 is such a huge number. So we can make a guess that there will be nothing less than 100 or 50 names that are popular. And those people are still working on the streets in Nigeria, and this has to be followed through. So I totally agree with you that let there be naming and shaming so that we know that these are the enemies of Nigeria. Otherwise, this will just pass as a political statement hmm. and nothing more. Okay, so um, quickly um, delving into politics. Um, we know that um, finally... Um, Obasaki has won all the election, you know, squabbles at the Supreme Court, and uh, Shomola and Izayamo are asking him to be magnanimous in victory. Um, do you say finally, you know, ev everything is laid to rest? Finally, everything is rested in terms of opposition from APC, but I don't think it's finally within his party. That's where he should be looking at now. Okay. Because there are some dissenting voices in PDP who believe that uh, 
is not carrying them along, whatever that means. You and I have an understanding. But what I foresee is a situation where there will be a regular kind of conflict till he finishes his tenure. Because by default, Abaseki is not the type that dishes out money to politicians. So there is going to be a regular conflict. But I feel that's a good one. That's a good development. And it is something that politicians should emulate. Think about the larger populace. Think about the people that voted. Think about the people who are paying these taxes and they need to have return on their investment. Rather than filtering the money in the hands of few politicians who are, you know, ingrainly selfish about the, the resources of the state. So for me, I think it's over with APC. The issue of forgery has been taken care of by the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. The issue of uh, whatever has to do with election has also been taken care by the APS court. So I think it's for him to move on and serve the people. All right. Let's also, um, you know, speak on, you know, something that seems to have been ignored um, in, you know, the wake of all the crisis in the country. And that is the death of 52 people in uh, Ebony. It says Ebony headers hmm. killings rises to 52 in Niger hmm. State as reports of 16. The other paper says uh, 13 with the police station raised. Um, hmm. Mr. Ladeinde, does it, you know, feel in, in any way awkward hmm. that 52 Nigerians can be killed so gruesomely and the country just moves on. It, it doesn't seem like it's breaking news or is worth, you know, uh, you know, a conversation. There's no better word to describe the picture you painted and it's something that we should be, uh, how do we look at it? It's just to let us know that the idea of banning open grazing should not be debated again. This is the time the presidency needs to bow, even if this is going to be the first time let us stop open grazing. Let's embrace uh, uh, ranching as it is. That seems to be a near permanent solution. I don't know whether it's going to be a permanent solution. However, the people that have been killed, the only way for us to say we are still in the country is that we must seek justice. I said something, and I'm, I, I, I'm bold to say it on, on the air this morning that immediately Gulak was killed, I know that the killers will be guilty in less than 24 hours. So why should some citizens be treated better than others? Why can't we have the killers of these 52 people? Why can't we have them paraded and get them prosecuted and let's do the needful? Every life of a citizen matters. That's not the only time the president should speak over Gulag issue. He should speak about the 52 people that have been killed. He should speak about the people that have been, you know, kidnapped and they are paying ransom with all their, their, their I mean, whatever they've earned all their lives. So everybody has to be taken seriously. That's what happened in a civilized climate. Let's not give room for people to make us feel that I don't want to use such words on the air, but it is something that we must take seriously and presidency need to be alive. Yeah. Another issue is, is it the president that is speaking or is the president's spokesman? Whatever it is, let somebody take an action. Let there be a presidential order. Let there be an order that makes people know that you cannot just perpetrate crime and go scot-free. Do you, do you, um, you know, before we go, the argument, um, you know, about Gulag's uh, killing, um, hmm. do you think that we would ever get to know the truth with regards, um, you know, what led to there, There's people who have said it's a, it's a political assassination. And then, of course, the police has painted a story that it was, um, you know, ESN and, and the likes. Hmm. I said, okay, I think the truth will rather reside in you or you have to believe what the officials have said. The police report does come out with their own. And as far as the government is concerned, that is the truth. You have looked at issues from the other side. I have also looked at it from the other side. The person of Gulag is not coincidental. 
we know the role he played. That looks too coincidental for us to just say this is mere coincidence. We will stay on the issue. Time will unfold so many things that will happen in the future, and the truth can only reside in us. Maybe some lawyers will take up the issue in the future and say, no, we do not believe this police report. We have to go to court. These are the characters behind the assassination, and we'll get justice. But for us to resign to faith and say the police report settles the matter, I think it will not be fair mm -hmm. to Gulak and his family members. Okay. Uh, there's so many other stories here to go through, but unfortunately we um, have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaidi Ladeende, for stepping in this morning. It's a pleasure. All right, we'll go on a short break and return to tell you what happened today in history. Do stay with us.